Hi folks, it seemed like we were always making a mess trying to steal coolant from one machine to top off or fill another machine. So let's have a little bit of fun making a beer tap coolant system that pulls coolant out of the large tank on our Haas VM3 and we can use it to fill up five gallon buckets or Fogbuster canisters. The two main parts to this project, we've got the actual beer tap handle itself, fair amount of material removal and some good fixturing tips there. And then we've got the manifold that we're going to use to mount the whole system, as well as do some thread milling, including a peculiar tap size. Who remembers our video on both ways adaptive infusion? This part is a great candidate for that. We've got a relatively long open geometry. It definitely helps reduce our cycle time by conventional cutting or using the both ways functionality within Fusion 360. The three quarter inch shear hog that we just used can't get into certain narrow areas of the model as well as the corner. So next up is a 3 8 inch end mill, still an adaptive operation, but this time in Fusion under geometry, we'll check rest machining and choose the source as previous operations. And that tells Fusion to look at the remaining stock when it calculates that tool path. We have this tool sticking out way longer than I normally like to. That makes it much more prone to deflection or chatter, and that can affect accuracy and surface finish, and it can sound horrible. So whenever possible, keep your tool as short as possible, keep your tool holder as short as possible, and keep your work holding as rigid as possible. We'll talk later in the video about some tips and tricks when you do have to stick the tool out. Switching now to a 1 8 inch end mill with an adaptive to remove most of the material around the logo. We made a mistake though, and we should have caught this one. This adaptive still can't get into a few different areas of the part. That's okay, but what happened was we had originally tried to use a 2D contour to do all the cleanup of the SMW in the interior shape here, and the tool snapped when it transitioned from doing a really light cleanup pass into these unmachined areas where it was effectively slotting. There's a bunch of different ways that you can solve this problem, but if you wanna use the same tool and you're not as worried about cycle time, ramp can be your friend. Instead of doing a 2D contour at full depth, we're walking around this part. Same recipe as the adaptive of 10,000 RPMs and 1,000th of an inch feed per tooth, but instead of taking a full depth pass, we're ramping down at an angle with no more than a 40,000th of an inch maximum step down. The other way to think about that is just about a third of the tool's diameter. Again, it takes a little longer, but it's generally a more reliable operation. And a lot of times what kills these small end mills is not having sufficient chip evacuation. If the chips are getting recut, it can generate a lot of heat, and with aluminum especially, that can turn the material into a gummy chip welding state, which then prevents your tool from being able to cut, or too much chip recutting can actually just simply cause tool deflection and increase radial load that can snap the tool off. Switching now to a 3 8 inch ball end mill, we thought that fillets looked a little bit better than chamfers here, we're gonna use a corner rounder in a second, but to machine these areas here that we can't get to with a corner rounding end mill, we're using this ball end mill with a parallel operation to surface those in. And it's really one of the most fun things to do, uh, in my opinion, on a CNC machine, is to use bull nose and ball nose end mills to surface parts in. Not only it's the most efficient, but it's a lot of fun. And after that, a 2D contour in conjunction with a corner radius end mill. We've had a ton of questions about these, so stick around in 2019. We'll have some more tips and tricks and content around how to use these. They can be really handy to use, but they can also be difficult to dial in, both with surface finish as well as not getting blend lines or edges on both the top and bottom of the fillet. Switching to OP2 now, it's a great example of one of the benefits of using a fixture plate system and here along with the SMW ModVice system. The flexibility of the ModVice system lets us hold the different size parts, but what's really important here is we've got a relatively long narrow part, so we definitely need the two ModVice systems for sufficient work holding. The problem is they're on different planes. If we take a look, these are offset by about 0.175 inches. So our solution was we 3D printed a spacer. It's really easy, plenty accurate enough, and it lifted that right mod vise up so we've got good work holding across the part. We did make one mistake 
You're about to see us pay the price for it. Anybody catch it right now? So what we didn't think about was when we flip this part over to do op two, we've still gotta be able to get to those pit bull or tiny vice screws to clamp them down. And the hat top stopped us from doing that. So the smart thing to do would have been to either machine away or drill a couple of holes in op one that would have let us reach with either regular hex driver or even a ball driver that gives you some angular flexibility on getting that tool into tighten the clamp. We forgot to do that, so we just had to manually machine that area one of the fun ways to make things look really good is with color fills. We powder coated this part and then coming back with a super fly to deck off the top leaves you with that color fill. If you don't have a powder coating system, hand paint or a rattle can paint works just fine as well. We then laser cut a piece of red acrylic as an insert into the tap handle to tie the color scheme together. We picked up a beer tap handle off of Amazon and it was a one and one eighth by 18 thread pitch. So we don't have that kind of a tap. Great candidate though for thread milling. Card here to the page and thread mill calculator that we put together. It's been awesome to see so many people write us to say how helpful it's been to calculate the correct pitch diameter offsets, as well as some minor tweaks for different types of thread mills to get good thread milling code out of Fusion on the first pass. So here the block will not only serve as the mount for the whole tap handle system, but it'll convert the 3 8 inch NPT hose line into our 1 and 1 8 by 18 beer tap. Using a quarter inch end mill with a really long stick out here to clean up this part after the superfly, definitely not ideal. Again, shorter tools give you a significant increase in rigidity. It's incredibly important to accuracy and surface finish and tool life, but sometimes you gotta stick them out. So when you've got a tool sticking out like that, reduce your surface speed. Normally we would run a quarter inch end mill at 10,000 RPMs. We're dropping that to about 4,600, which is more than half, but keep your feed per tooth at something reasonable. Here we've got it at 2,007 inch feed per tooth because you need to let the tool still take a cut. Taking that cut, that action actually helps stabilize the tool. Tools are happier when they get to cut. Finally, drilling a couple of holes. I know you thought we could only make bird's nests on lathes, right? So I wanna get rid of these, and that's one of my on my to-do list this year is just become a better drilling person. One of the easiest solutions in Fusion would be to select a chip breaking partial or track and do really short pecking depths. That's gonna break up the chips by creating an interrupted drilling cycle. The problem with that is every time you start a drilled hole, that's where you really wear out the drill. Now, aluminum's not that hard on it, but nevertheless, I'd like to solve this with better feeds and speeds. So we're gonna be working on that, pushing the drill harder to break those chips Keeping those chips shorter gets rid of those bird's nests, which are gonna mar up your part, and they're just generally unsafe. I never like to modify our CNC machines when I don't have to. So here we're gonna make use of some, of some existing threaded holes on the sheet metal enclosure around the Haas. We're just using the laser cut acrylic plate for now. We might need to swap it out to an aluminum later, especially if we like this location. But again, for now, this will work great. So tying it all together, we picked up some new plumbing hardware, including a T adapter that gives us the extra split line off of our washdown hose to feed our tap system. And it's a great height. It's low enough that we can feed a five gallon bucket, but it's high enough to where you can easily still hold a fog buster canister underneath it to top one of those off when you need to. So certainly a little bit of overkill, but honestly a really helpful project to help top up those machines when we need to and not make a mess and not have it just be something that's a hassle, but rather something that's actually kind of fun. So hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.